Great. Yeah, very well. Uh, perfect. Okay. Um, greetings from Thai News. Good evening, Asia and Middle East. Good afternoon, Europe. Good morning, America. Welcome to our first Thai News virtual conference on advanced solar modules. Again, organized um, like all the other events by our team based in India, China, and Germany. My name is Michael Schmela. I'm the managing director of Thai News, a solar news platform, which is focusing primarily on solar technology, emphasize technology. Um, there's probably no other solar product segment where we've seen in recent years as much development as in the module field call it the heart of the solar system. And um, this heart of the solar system has been challenging, well, everyone else involved um, being the pacemaker in recent years. Um, we've been covering these improvements with the uh, time news with our reports on this topic, um, with the first one published in 2017, that was shortly after we went online, online with our platform. And this event today um, is, um, is also the launch pad for our latest edition, and which we will um, publish tomorrow, and should be the start of a regular annual conference series on this topic. So with, with Time News providing a, a free accessible global platform to you experts um, to discuss the technical evolution of advanced solar modules. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was uh, the last two, three days, there were some Twitter posts from PV Info Link on the top 10 PV suppliers 2020. So I'm really glad to announce that we were able to win five of them to um, sponsor this event so we can keep it free of charge. So thanks to um, Trina Ryzen, Jinko, Longi and Chint Astrology. And I'm also glad this concept works. Um, so this uh, just before we started i checked we had over 800 registrations from around the world um, i think that's uh, um, great to start with just from an organizational point of view um, we try to keep our events very simple that's why we use zoom um, which is known and accessible everywhere so um, please use the the chat room function not only to ask questions to the presenters but also in general and also to answer questions you see or comments you see um, I, I would like to or we would like to see this somewhat of a digital coffee room where you don't have to change rooms um, and where you just can chat with anyone one around publicly and um, yeah, um, if you, yeah, I think that's that's how we can do it. Um, this is um, a, a two-day event, so um, today and tomorrow. It uh, will take place from uh, 14 to 17 uh, CET um, uh, to enable us to reach, and we chose that time frame. Um, we, we've done that also in the past, with the past events, to reach as many experts in the field around the world. So from Asia, where it's indeed rather late, um, 
um, to the Americas where it's rather early, but um, that gives us um, the opportunity to, um, to involve as many people as possible. Um, so taking me <laughs> as a center sitting uh, at least these days uh, for a year now actually in Europe uh, without traveling. So today we will focus on um, um, on 210 millimeter based modules um, as the large, largest and most powerful module variety in the market. Um, tomorrow when we launch um, our advanced module report, we will rather look at the different main applications for, for standard products, residential, C&I and, I, and utility. So um, thanks again to the sponsors for day one of the event, that's um, Trina and Ryzen. Um, who will also um, present today. So today we have, um, I'm really happy to have the leaders in the field of 210 millimeter technology present their latest product strategies. Um, um, our day one is titled um, standardization on high performance 210 millimeter modules and its LCOE advantages. And um, <clears throat> what, we, what we do, we've invited um, Anis Juini um, from, um, from CEA Ines, um, that's a um, leading French um, solar, uh, National Solar Institute to, to set the scene on advanced solar module technology. Before we went, then we have representatives from, um, uh, from, Trin, um, from Trina, Horizon and Canadian then present uh, the latest on their G, um, G12 uh, 210 millimeter cells. Um, this, um, this presentation part will then be followed like um, um, usual um, with, a, with a panel discussion um, where we have then executives um, from, from the three companies and, and CA Ines and discuss what we learned during the day. Um, Okay, so let me first introduce, happily introduce our keynote speakers, Anis Juini. Anis is the head of solar at um, Beauce CEA, that's uh, French for Commissariat à l'énergie atomique et aux énergies alternatives, so the French government research body for nuclear and renewable energy, and also of INES, the National French Solar Energy Institute. Um, Anis and me, we know each other for a while. Um, he has been in solar for many, many years. Um, and uh, I think from that time, we also know us each other. And he was working also still as a crystallization engineer um, in, the, in the first decade of this century at a then very promising US startup called Cali Solar. Um, Anis, I'm very happy to have you with us today and to tell us a little bit of what you are doing at Ines on, on advanced mod solar module research. The floor is yours. Michael, really thank you very much. I'm really honored to be, to be a part of this nice panel. I heard you saying that there is uh, almost 800 worldwide person connected now in the, for, for our, for our um, video conference. I would really, it's really a great honor to be, uh, to be speaking, speaking and, uh, and bringing some added value uh, from the French Valley of PV from Chambéry. So I will try just to share my screen. And uh, if, if the administrator allow me, you, he told me you cannot share your screen. I'm not good. I can. Excellent. And then, uh, yeah, I would, I would, this is my, my few, my, my first words are to you and your team, Michael, uh, a lot, a lot of people from our side, they really appreciate your, uh, your effort. Uh, they, they really appreciate what you are doing. And, and, and this new concept is quite simple, quite fluid. And then you are getting, uh, getting it easy, easy access using Zoom and, uh, and uh, free access for everybody. And this is helping in terms of training and capacity building about PV competences worldwide. And this is coming directly from top level people, directly to very, very large audience. You are, I would say, the first who made it this way. And thank you on behalf of all the Ines team on that. 
So I will try to go to the, the talk. It was really, it will be um, focusing a little bit on, on a part of it of, of, on cell technology, what we are seeing in the market coming from the wafer to the cell. And then what we discussed with Michael, he said, it will be good that you made some opening uh, related to different kind of, of application. And, uh, and we are seeing a lot of new product coming from, from Ines. It should be good that you, you show this. So to explain to you, you are hearing a lot, CEA, Atomic and Alternative Energy Commission, and sometimes you are he hearing a lot the name of INES, National Institute of Solar Energy. I try to prepare two slides for that. So CEA, our main work is innovation in different fields, defense, energy, technological research, and fundamental science. More around 20,000 employees in France, 5 billion as a budget, and 700 patent year. We belong to, uh, to the part which is called technological research. And our division, it's to make it simple, 500 employees, 50 million as an annual budget, and more than 60 patent a year. You have the words that we are working on it. Premium cells, process and equipment, PV integration, power electronics. Of course, when you are developing power, uh, PV power, uh, PV module or PV systems, you are thinking about power plants, grid integration, and diagnosis and data management. Storage, of course, and smart grid. We are surrounded by 150 industrial partners. You have in the photo that you, see, you are seeing in front of you, uh, a motivated team working in, in, two, in two fields, one dedicated to hardware development and the other part, which is complementary, focusing on software development. And we are based in, uh, in, in Chambéry, just close to the Italian and Swiss border, very easy access from Lyon and Paris. So you are welcome to visit us anytime you want. If we go to the PV world, a lot of things are happening. The power plants are becoming big, bigger, and more and more, I would say, asking for module capacity. We are seeing the market uh, increasing, even with all happen with all what happened in, in, in 2020, we see the capacity is increasing and still more to come. Uh, the average size of, of a power plant, we were talking about a few megawatt or a few tens, tens of megawatt, or a few hundred, and now we are even hearing some uh, power plants more than a gigawatt in different in different uh, worldwide locations. So the module need to be adapted for that, and there is a lot of development at the module level, and new challenges. I will I will just mention what all the people are looking at it: power, price, quality, because we have a lot of uh, energy player looking to the. Um, to, to, the, to the PV, not to install and to run, but to install and operate and think about what's coming in 20 and 30 years. And of, of course, at Ines, since five years, we are pushing a lot uh, this circular economy approach, eco design, and recycling our module. I tried to, to gather them, to combine them in six points. It was difficult. You will have, uh, I would say, all the details in this slide. So, first, there is a lot of work on the wafer and cell. Uh, level. As we, as you will see today, a lot of people are working in 210 millimeter. Other industrial partners or industrial um, colleagues very present in the ecosystem are talking about 182 M10. Which way to go? There is a lot of discussion. We we'll learn a lot today about 210. So, and we don't forget that just a few years ago, we were talking a lot about thinner wafer. So today, how to combine bigger and thinner at the same time for the benefit of, um, of the, 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 the cells, uh, the solar cells and the tandem solar cells. Second point, it's about power and price. We are going for multi-gigawatt scale fabs, process automation. We, ha we are having tools today with a, with a throughput more than four to 5,000 per hour, wafer per hour or cell per hour. So checking the module, having the higher power density, thinking a lot about design. Third point is about Bifaciality versus high density. So we want to cover the module to get the maximum of power out of it. And we are thinking carefully about the bifaciality. We have some technology like what we are pushing, like heterojunction, with the bifaciality factor more than 90%. Uh, Perk cells also, they have a bifaciality factor, which is 70, 75%. So now we don't talk anymore about bankability of bifaciality. It's in there. there is, it has a, uh, its own place in the market. 
and it's be becoming a, an integrated part of the new module. Fourth, I think the point number four is how to get this module a little bit more smart, multifunctional and integrated. We are talking here about microinverter. We are talking here about a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of element which can help the module to go to the next step. Lightweight, flexible, colored. Uh, why not auto cleaning or auto cooling? And the latest point is about technology, bankability, quality and data analytics, because a lot of energy players are today thinking about what's happening with this module 10 years later or 30 years later. And the sixth point, this is in, in addition to economy, innovation for the, for the technology, price and economy, then we add uh, this environmental, I would say, parameter about eco-design and recyclability. Here, just a graph that we, we take it from PV exchange. It shows a difference between the mainstream module, 22 cents per euro per watt credit for European market. And I would say the best in class, all the other modules having uh, more power, of course, more power, more price, and it's compensated at the, at the, um, the LCOE level, which means at the end, uh, you gain a lot at the module level and you gain a lot at the LCOE level if you are going really to better module, even though you are paying a little bit more for that. I try to come back quickly for the, for the size of the wafer. We are seeing those, those years, and especially in 2020, before the beginning of the year and the end of the year, a strong move towards, we are hearing a lot of discussion about M4, M4+, plus, and then we moved quickly to M6, and then suddenly M6 wafer is becoming a transition wafer, and then we move it to M10, M12, and which is, this is similar a little bit what happened in the microelectronics, going from 200 millimeter diameter wafer to 300 millimeter, and it's coming a little bit some years later for the PV, and of course we are seeing a lot of benefit even though there's still a lot of technological challenges behind those big wafers. But we are more seeing, I would say, the positive point coming out of it. And we think that the future will be uh, maybe more M10 and M12 mix. And then after we'll see which one will take over. Uh, to, some history. Michael mentioned a little bit our, our joint experience in Germany at the good times in 20, uh, 2000, uh, 2006, 2007. And at Ines, at that time, or even earlier, the colleagues here, they started M12 cells produced at Ines with, uh, with Sebastian Dubois and, uh, and, and a lot of people surrounding him. And then we tried those, those, those wafers. And of course, we haven't worked years on that, but we, uh, there was a lot of um, added value. And we there is a lot of, I would say, scientific and technological interest, but there is also um, a lot of problems that I think industry is working heavily on that today, like handling, automation, wafer sticking in the career when we are putting them. So I think it's, there is a lot of uh, challenging points need to be worked out, but PV industry showed that they, 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 they are able to raise this in a very, very short time and in, a, in an impressive way. From 2006 to now, we pushed a lot heterojunction technology from fab, from lab to fab, from small scale to bigger scale, from low throughput to very high throughput, from working on our own to working with an equipment manufacturer to transferring this to our partner, NL Green Power, and we are heavily discussing with, with other partners like you have seen in the press, REC or others may be interested to, be, um, to, be, uh, to get something done in France. So it takes roughly around 10 years to bring a technology from a paper, I would say uh, a PowerPoint file to, uh, to, to, to production line. And we are proud that you made this choice years ago. Uh, we published it by the end of last year, the 25% efficiency certified Coltec. And for us, it's a quite a very symbolic, I would say uh, target that is reached. Uh, for this technology today, we can see that it gather a lot of, of, of points, efficiency, low temperature coefficient. It's a free from different, uh, I would say, uh, it's, it's offering, of, of course, nature by faciality and uh, compatible with thin wafer because the wafer is treated from both sides. And of course, 
we have this thin wafer, then you can really think about different application, which I will come back a little bit later on that. And of course, free from different problems that the other technology are facing, PID, LID, etc. And of course, the energy yield, it's, it's, we'll show some data on that and we'll show you the, the manufacturing aspect of this technology. So we see that stars are getting aligned behind this technology today for going for a next phase, uh, for, a, for, a, for a manufacturing at the gigawatt scale. This ecosystem is really worldwide. There is a part of it in Europe between, uh, between Germany, France, Italy. And we have also, uh, of course, from the Asian side, we have a lot of colleagues are very, are heavily involved and pushing this technology. I would say we have the three pillar, energy, yield, cost, and, and, and performance, which has gathered today together in order to offer a reduced LCOE. So I think you will see a lot of fabs coming with heterojunction for the coming years and, and, uh, and taking over, I would say, for the next step behind, behind PERC and uh, going hand in hand with PERC with passivated contact, preparing the next generation, which will be tandem technology. At the module level, at Ines, we almost gathered the whole value chain. Technology side, design process, prototyping, we are pushing a lot because this is it's a source of learning behind our innovation. And of course, we are uh, behind prototyping, we are pushing a lot for field data analysis, whether in France or in Chile. And we are also working deeply with many partners developing the right bomb for their technology. So you have a complete offer around, around us and uh, a, a clear roadmap, which is moving, of course, from one month to another. It's difficult to follow up and to, to be offering, I would say, the, the best in class module related to heterojunction. And uh, you'll see the impressive numbers. Two years ago, we were very, very happy and proud to announce at, uh, at SNEC 412 watt module. And we have seen two years later, people are talking about uh, 500 plus or even thinking about 600 plus for, uh, for 72 equivalent cells. We said equivalent because people are cutting and, and thinking about a new design. Uh, one of the things that we are seeing the heterojunction technology as, as a good cell offering more than 24% efficiency at the production level. We check the performance with one of our partner, Eternal Sun, and we compared about commercial perk, and we were seeing that thanks to the low temperature coefficient, that silicon heterojunction module, they can deliver 5% more, more output. And we see it in the graph after more than uh, at, at the high temperature, which is uh, this is comp compatible about harsh and uh, and hot area. Uh, on the other side, we check it. Here you have the light soaking for more than hundred more than hundred hours, and you see let's say it's a clear gain of one percent due time. It's a kind of new regeneration of the power, and this is dedicated to heterojunction compared to other degradation for other technology. So we think that this is a good start, but need to be studied with industrial partner, with more data, with more module, but at least is a very good starting point. You will see also we tested, of course, we are testing our module when it comes to PID. We are testing with different encapsulant, and we see very low loss compared to what we are seeing to commercial module. We are bringing our module to the field. I said part of it at Ines, uh, and part of it in the south of France, and part of it in Chile. And so far, we are seeing a gain coming from, from our module and compared to the best-in-class module. You can see it here also. It's, it's the gain, it's clear. Sometimes, due to bifaciality, we can really go to, I have seen a number published just uh, this week on, on, uh, on PV magazine. It was around 17%. For us, it's, we are reaching somehow the same average, 17, 18, and it could go sometimes around 20%. Having 20% efficiency from, uh, or, or power more from a natural bifacial cell and module, this is really, it's, it's really a huge added value. Still the question that you are working on my facility today, whether it's to go with um, transparent back sheet or double glass and depending also on different application. 
So if I, can, if I summarize a little bit this first part, we see that we were reaching 0.6 efficiency progress from one year to another since many years, and this is great for the PV technology. We see now it's, there is a kind of asymptote with, with PERC technology, preparing the, the place for passivated and heterojunction technology, which a lot of people are very active to bring it to the gigawatt scale. And in the middle, there was a gap in term of time, and people, they focused a lot on what we call beyond MOO, which means focusing on the module power increase. And by shingling, gapless, half cells, increasing the size. And then the third part will be back again to the efficiency increase. And this is coming with tandem cells. We are well prepared for the tandem cells by having the, the record on heterojunction. As you know, heterojunction, it's a, com a combination between crystalline and, and amorphous. And uh, our main target today is how to reproduce all this at M2 and M12 cell level or wafer, wafer size. And of course, we have a clear approach, economical approach about um, co cost reduction. For the tandem, we can take it from two parts. We have our perovskite development on its own and we try to combine it with, with the crystalline. We published 23% active area efficiency. We try to secure 25% by the end of this year. We try to get it a little bit earlier and having a new approach, which is doing all this at a very, very large area in, in order to shorten the time for, energy, for technology transfer to the industrial partner. If I move to the second part, which means what we can do with the PV module, we can do a lot. It's a huge. I will show you some examples. Just look at this. We tried average, average module weight is 10 to 12 kilogram per square meter. We tried to adapt it to the road with eight kilogram per square meter and it was successful and we have a commercial product today. You can buy it. We tried to divide the weight by two and bring it to six and to have a light module adapted to light infrastructure in terms of buildings. And we have a huge uh, commercial and industrial uh, park when when the structure will be will not be adapted to the module it should be the opposite uh, some uh, some I would say specific application when it comes to boats with Operasol and uh, and Ducea it's French company we worked on on a very light module plug and play and I would say one of the other module that I will talk about is how to bring the module weight below a kilogram you can see here more details about multifunctional module, which can be sticked directly to the road. And in addition to that, we can add more functionality about lightning, about heating for, for cold area like, like in Canada or others. And this is a quite a very active development. It's a new way of thinking, a new way of designing the stack of the module. And we can really get, um, I would say, um, an industrial product out of it. And this is development. It, it, it's for more than 10 years development at Ines in order to bring this to market. The other one that I talked about, it's a kind of plug and play, very light module that you can install it and remove it in a few minutes, and which is giving all the time the same performance like standard module, and it can be uh, used for different application, and it can be installed in a very, very light uh, infrastructure. Of course, the module you can you can play with it we can stick it on the pv drones and we have a lot of application especially for agricultural application behind this uh, car integration for the module a lot a lot of programs in in, in europe especially uh, coming i would say at the second phase after what happening in asia in order to develop the electrical car and we think that the pv module can bring some added value uh, i would say autonomy for maybe a few kilometers or some functionality about the car that can be covered. And uh, we are working heavily on that. And uh, we made, I would say, different uh, presentation about this. And I tried to summarize this in one slide. This is a very large module. I would say more than, uh, than, uh, than four square meter and uh, very thin. And here it was really pushing the module to, to its limit which means we need the highest efficiency and the lowest weight. And we're successful to, keep, to, to bring to the market one of the highest efficiency module, 
while keeping the weight below 800 gram per square meter. And this will, we can stick it on the top of a stratus bus for which will be for stratospheric, uh, stratospheric application. And the word is complicated, huh? And this is for a multi mission. Uh, it's it's somehow a midway between uh, 20 kilometer from from us, and uh, and of course we are facing the same problem for the standard module, but in in a very aggressive approach. Aggressive of people that are used to prepare this for space application. Another thing, we are working with one of our partner in order to promote linear PV. Linear PV close to the roads, linear PV close to the rivers. And this is coming in combination with many other applications about uh, the adapted module for, for floating uh, installation or for agri um, photovoltaic application. So in this talk, I will just go quickly because I think uh, time is short, but you know that we have a lot of development about this and we can really bring you um, the needed information if you are interested. I would like to, to finish with one of the main important points. Europe pushed a lot, and thanks to Germany, 50, more than 50 gigawatt installed. There was a strong ecosystem about manufacturing, I would say preparing the tools and, uh, and manufacturing the cells on the module. And now this happened 10 years ago. And now people are asking what to do with those module, especially the module now is, we are, we are having for the same surface two or three more power than a module that it's, it was bought for, for, for 10 years ago. So the circular economy and its application for the PV world is still one of the main points that we need to focus on for the next coming year, for the next coming month, I would say, because it's really, we need to do it now. And it's not linked to wafer or cells or module or system, it's everywhere. We need to think about the component and the material cost reduction. We need to think about the process and the alternative that we can bring using other materials, using other processes in order to save energy and to save material. And this is at the cell, mod, the, cell the module, and, and the system level. Durability of usage. This is also one of the main important. And this is very linked to the application. And we have really to take care of it. By the way, in this slide, we have the five pillar for the circular economy, which is sustainable extraction, eco-design, responsible consumption, durability, and recycling, of course. So this is one of the main topics that we are very active with. Europe is very sensitive, French as a nation also, and we try to gather uh, a worldwide ecosystem, uh, and we start also with the colleagues from US and to, to push forward. If you see the different application, different design, what we can do with the module, there is no limit. I think only the sky is the limit. And you see it in one slide. At Ines, we try to promote a lot the, the, I would say the logo PV everywhere, or even better, everywhere, for all and forever. And I thank you for your time, and I'll be glad to answer your question. I tried to give you an overview. Of course, I went quickly from one slide to another because there is a lot of technical details, but I tried to prepare a rich slides which I can share with you. They can read it and they can come back to us. And I will be glad to get in touch with you or all my experts because all what you have seen, it's a teamwork. And thank you for the Ines team. And thanks again for tying news for, for, for this invitation. Thank you. Anis, thank you. Very nice uh, kickoff for the event. Um, a few questions. Uh, I think um, we're late, um, but um, it's all right. I think we will catch up. And uh, I think this is about discussion. So, we should uh, not save on uh, on exchanging information. So um, I think there are a few question, questions. I think one is really maybe back to your um, goes back to your original work on crystallization, which is now becoming very important again as we go to much uh, much bigger ingots. Um, so there's one question from from Jan Fede um, asking um, if. Um, if, if you see uh, any problems with high speed growth of uh, 257 millimeter, 297 millimeter um, di di diameter ingots um, in terms of crystalline defects? Oh, I would say it's, um, as you mentioned this, uh, Michael, I was also myself doing a lot on, in terms of, um, 
of growth using Shokralski technique. And it was quite obvious for all the actors. If you want a good quality, then you need to go to go somehow slowly. And uh, and this is very, very adapted to, um, to sales, around 20% efficiency. Now we are pushing to the limit and, and, uh, and we are looking to the perfect silicon material. And on the other side, we are looking to productivity. I think really it will be one of the main issues. And one of the main issues behind the, behind which choice will go for M10 or, or M12 or G12, it's a productivity of um, productivity of, of the CZ ingot. Because I think there will be a limit, even though silicon shows us that it's very difficult to predict anything. And people, they were doing great because it's, uh, it's now mono is going even over over multi-crystalline in all the aspects of them, productivity, price, and everything. Uh, so it's it will be, uh, f f as a specialist, I would say, yes, it's one of the main issues. Uh, if I look what's happening in, in, um, in, in the PV world since a long time, I think people, they will overcome it by reducing the chambers, by, by controlling the temperature, by, uh, there is a lot of things which you can overcome th this, this, this problem. And, uh, and on the other side, uh, which cell technology process you are going for? Is it low temperature process or is it a high temperature process yeah, that you still, you can recover or you can cover some, uh, some defects other way for that? Very nice. Uh, maybe um, two more. I think you covered them um, or you focused also on, on HJT. I think we can maybe discuss it also on, later on the panel, but just a question. Do you see any problems for HJT to go um, to wafer dimensions that we're discussing today? So um, 210, is this an issue for HJT in general? Do you see that or can we go there? It's, I would say in terms of cell process, it's, I would say if I, if I exclude a little bit the wet part, the other processes mainly are, 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 are somehow in, um, in inline tools treated from both sides, put in flat in in horizontal manner. I really don't see any uh, any any problem with uh, with um, with with this combination heterojunction with la large wafers. Uh, the only thing that that we will still have some work to do on it. Heterojunction proved that we while going to 100 micron we still can keep the same efficiency. And we have seen that the combination is really terrific. The combination of increasing the efficiency and reducing the thickness of the wafer, it's a nice combination. So one of the questions will be, which thickness we will be able to go? Was it 130, 140 or below for heterojunction large wafers? And I think uh, the, the limit point could be, uh, could be the wet part. If we continue having the same design like today, and uh, and and having asking for the tools with uh, with the throughput more than five to six thousand wafer per hour. Okay, let's maybe discuss it also later on the panel. Uh, some of the companies that we have today are really focusing um, their 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 future developments on HJT. So um, I think um, let's let's um, not push it further um, with questions and rather continue. Again, I just really also liked um, that you. Um, um, included one one aspect into advanced modules and that's really sustainability because I think um, this is what we as solar I think look should look much more at and um, so I think we are for as a power generation uh, technology obviously um, very sustainable by nature but uh, we can do more I think we it's already great that we're seeing for example some company already having joined uh, the RE100 initiative said they really want to produce also their modules with 100% renewables and there are many things we can do on the product side so I think that's that's really great uh, Anis. Okay then let's thanks Thank you again and talk later on the panel. Um, Thank you very much.